Welcome to the Satellite Data Training Series presented by the Aerosol Team at the NOAA NESDIS Center for Satellite Applications and Research. Today I'm going to show you how to order and download data files for Level 2 data products, products such as aerosol optical depth, aerosol detection, and active fires from the VIRS sensor on NOAA's JPSS satellites. To do that, we will use the Comprehensive Large Array Data Stewardship System, or CLASS, which is the primary source for NOAA satellite data. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is open up your favorite browser. I'm using Google Chrome. And in the search engine, we're gonna type NOAA class. And that should be the first result that comes up. That should be the NOAA class that we're looking for. So let's click on that. And we'll come to the class homepage here. Uh, and the first thing that you wanna do, if you haven't already, you need to register and create a user guest profile. So at the menu at the top here, let's click on register. Uh, and you'll see this screen will come up. And so you wanna enter your last name, your first name, create a password, verify the password, and then enter your email address. And you wanna make sure this is the email address where you want to be receiving notifications uh, that your data files have been uh, ordered and, and are ready. Uh, so once you enter that, click register at the bottom and you'll see the a screen will come up and it will give you your username. You just wanna make a note of that because that's what you're gonna to use to log in along with the password you created. So I've actually already registered, uh, so I don't need to complete this step. So once you have that information, you wanna come up and click on login, uh, and you'll see this screen. So here you wanna enter your username and your password. Um, and it's important to log in because you can't actually order any data files unless you're logged in. You can look through data files, see what's out there and available, but you can't do the last, very last step, which is actually ordering the files unless you're logged in. So let me take a minute and log in here. All right, now that you've logged in, we're gonna come back to the class homepage and we're gonna to go to this menu at the top here where it says, please select a product to search. And we're gonna click on that and we're gonna scroll down until we start seeing the JPSS products. And we're gonna go down to the end where we start seeing the JPSS VIRS products. And we're gonna select the one that says JPSS VIRS products granule. So that's JPSS VIRS products granule. And then we're gonna click go and now the search page is gonna open. So at the top, you'll see a data description section and that'll just give you some information about the level two products. You may wish to review this before you go any further. Then you'll see there's a button next to the details, metadata and documentation. You wanna click on that. Um, that'll open up, it'll just give you more, some more specific details about the VIRS level two products. And then you'll see there's a link here uh, called see product details. So if you click on that, you'll get a, a, a warning box will open up asking you if you wanna to continue to open up this page. Click okay, uh, and a new tab will open. And so you'll see here, um, you'll, you'll notice there's links to all the different VIRS level two data product files. So um, you know if, if there's one in particular you're interested in, so let's say we're looking at aerosol optical depth or aerosol detection, click on that link um, and you'll see some more information will open up and there'll be uh, additional links here to details, metadata, and Zoom to, which will give you the geographic uh, coverage of the particular product. And you can click on these links. Um, the details will take you to another page that has all of the documentation for the particular product. So things like the product user guides and the, uh, the latest readme files for the products. Uh, and so I recommend uh, coming here and just taking a look at this information, uh, making sure you know the details about the particular products that you're going to be working with uh, before you download the data files and um, start working with the data. All right, so now we're back on the class page. So again, we're um, still on the search page. We're gonna keep scrolling down. Uh, you'll see there's a notes section here. This just kind of has the most recent um, headlines, as it were, about the VIRS products. So you may wish to review that as well before you continue. Uh, and then we'll come to the spatial section here. And this is where you're actually gonna select the geographic area for uh, your particular event of interest. Uh, so you can do it two different ways. You can actually use the tools on the map here. So for example, you can just draw a box around the area of interest, just like that. And you can use these different tools to zoom in or zoom out. So let's, if we zoom in, we might wanna pan um, to the left or up to cover our particular area, 
or so you can do it that way or you can use um, this information or this these uh, tools over here on the right and you can actually enter uh, manually the coordinates perhaps of the area of interest so I'm just going to enter the coordinates corresponding to the continents of the United States but whatever way is easier for you that's what you want to do you want to select that particular geographic area of interest um, and again, because Vera's products are global, you can pick uh, in, in the entire globe or zoom into a specific region. All right, so once you've done that, you're going to scroll down and we're going to come to the temporal section. Uh, and this is where you want to use the buttons to select the start and end date for the period of interest. So you can select one day or uh, multiple days. So I'm actually going to select March 8th, 2020. So again, you can enter that manually. You can use these little buttons to do it, all right? And then you're gonna come over here and um, to, the, to the menu here on the right, and you're gonna to wanna to enter the start time and the end time in UTC, Universal Coordinated Time, for your period of interest. Um, now, remember, the VIRA sensor is on the SNPP and NOAA-20 polar orbiting satellites, so that means there are a limited number of observations per day during daytime and nighttime. And um, also remember that aerosol optical depth and aerosol detection are available during daylight hours only. So if you aren't sure when the overpass times are for your day of interest, you can just leave the start and, and end times unchanged. And that will return all of the available data files for that particular day. Um, or maybe you know the specific overpass for the, the data product you're interested in, and then you can enter the start and end times uh, here for that particular period. And again, you can specify these, these start and start uh, date and end date and start time and end time for uh, multiple days or um, you know, individual days or if you have a range of days that you're looking at. All right, so then you're going to want to scroll down to the advanced search section here at the bottom of the page. And this is where you're going to select the specific under data type, the specific data product that you're interested in. So presumably you're going to be looking for VIRS active fires perhaps VIRS aerosol optical depth uh, and or VIRS aerosol detection. So you can pick uh, one product or multiple products at the same time. Um, and this EDR here stands for environmental data record. That's just part of the official name for the VIRS level two products, all right? So pick um, the, the product or products that you're interested in. So let's see, I'm gonna pick um, aerosol detection today. Let's do that. And then you come over here and you can pick the satellite that you're interested in. Uh, so again, you can pick one, so you can pick NOAA 20 or SNPP, or you can pick both. So again, the highlighted, uh, highlight the particular satellite to select it. So I'm just going to look at, let's say I'll just look at, at SNPP today. All right, so then you come down at the bottom, you have two different options to order your products. So if you have, let's say, a really large uh, set of files that you've ordered, perhaps you're an advanced user and you're ordering a lot of data files, you want to select the quick search and order button because that'll just go directly to uh, placing your order without any sort of review or inventory of the, the products you selected. But if you're a new user or you want to actually review what you've selected first, um, I recommend using the search button here. Um, that's what we're going to do today. That's going to open up another window, which is going to allow us to actually review the, the files that we've selected and make sure we have the, the, the actual products and, and files uh, corresponding to the overpass times for the satellites that we're interested in. So let's go ahead and, and select that, that button. All right, the data products search results page will open. You'll see a list of files for the date and time period you indicated, as well as the data product specifications you selected on the last page. So as you, you can see here, we we'll scroll down, you can see the list of files. Um, just as a note, um, VIRS data files are bundled in TAR files for convenience, and that's because order limits on class are restricted by file counts with a maximum of 500 files. So inside each of these TAR files here, there will be five to seven individual VIRS NetCDF data files, and each NetCDF data file contains one granule of VIRS data. So just be aware of that as you're ordering. All right, so at the top of the page, you'll see there's a summary. It'll show you how many pages of results that you have. In this case, we only have one page, but if you've perhaps selected multiple days on the previous page when you were searching, you might have more than one page worth of, of results. Uh, it'll give you uh, the number of hits or the number of data files that have come up. In this case, we have nine hits or nine data files. 
and it'll show you the items in your shopping cart. Uh, in, to actually order the files, we have to put them in our shopping cart, which is what we're going to do next. And again, just as a reminder, the total number that you can order each for each order is limited to 500 files. All right, so as I mentioned, we have to put the items that we want to order in our shopping cart. We can do that a couple of different ways. So first, you can come over here to the shopping cart column, and you can manually check the little box next to the files that you want to order. Uh, or if you want, you can come up to where it says select data sets. Let's say you want all the files and you can collect, click it, uh, click that in this case, one through nine, and you'll see um, automatically that the boxes next to all the files will be, will be checked. If you aren't sure, like maybe you can't tell you're looking at the start and end time and you're, you know, you're not sure, um, maybe what area this particular file corresponds to, you can come up to the top and you'll see there's a button that says generate map. If you click on that. And I make a little map and the geographic areas that correspond to each of the, the files that you've, you've selected uh, will come up in, in it's color coded. So you can see in this case, this first entry here is this blue color. Um, and you'll see this area here uh, highlighting uh, Eastern Canada and part of the Atlantic, Northern Atlantic Ocean. That area corresponds to the area that's covered by this, this first file. And then the next one is this red area. And again, you see that would be corresponding to the, this data file here that's shaded in red. Okay, so if you're not sure exactly um, what the, the coverage is for the particular files, if maybe you want them all, you can always come and check the map just to ensure that you're getting the files that you want. Okay, so once you're either satisfied, satisfied excuse me, you've selected the ones that you want, you check they're in your shopping cart, then we're now we're gonna actually order the file. So then we click on go to cart. All right, and then the shopping cart page is going to open. And at the top, you'll have a summary. It'll tell you how many files that are in your order, their total size. You'll see the email that you selected when you set up your user profile. This is where you'll be receiving emails from class uh, regarding the status of your order. Okay, and then you look down, and you can have one more chance to, to edit your order. All right, so just review everything, make sure it looks um, acceptable. Um, let's say maybe I made a mistake and I didn't want actually this first file. Uh, you can unclick here uh, any items that you don't want and they won't be ordered. Okay, so once you're satisfied, come up here to the top and select place order. All right, and now you'll receive a confirmation page. So it'll give you a little summary. It'll tell you what your order number is. Uh, and there's also a little survey here that you can fill out if you'd like. It, it's not mandatory. And then within a few minutes, you'll receive an email uh, confirming your order. And so let me, uh, let me show you what that's going to look like. All right, within a minute or two of placing your order from class, you'll get a veri verification email that looks like this one, uh, confirming your order. Okay, so this is just for informational purposes. So I'll scroll down a little bit. It'll just, it'll list the, the data files that you ordered. Uh, it'll give you a little bit more information, but this is just a notification, so there's nothing that you have to do um, about this, okay? So anywhere from minutes to hours, um, your order will be ready, and you'll get another email. Uh, unfortunately, the, the, the wait time varies extremely widely, so um, you're just going to have to be patient. Usually, you know, orders are processed relatively quickly. But sometimes if there's a it's a high volume day, it may take a little bit longer. Okay, so once your files are ready, you'll get this second email, which uh, has the, the, the term processing complete in the, uh, the subject line. Okay, uh, and I'll have your order number here at the top. And so once you get this, this email, you'll scroll through, you'll see again, it'll list the, the data files that you ordered. Uh, and there's a couple of ways that you can download the files that you ordered, okay? If you only have a few files, like maybe, you know, anywhere from like one to three or four, all right, probably the easiest thing to do is just download them through a web browser. So if you come down to the bottom of the email underneath the list of the data files, you'll see there's a link here, uh, an HTTPS link. So if you click on that, um, it'll open up in your web browser. It'll open up a page that looks like this, okay? Uh, class orders download. So if you click here on the 001 at the top, click on that, it'll take you to another page where it'll actually have the list of your data files. And if you click on them one by one, 
um, you can actually, so you, you'll click on it. I'm not, uh, why don't I do that? Click on it so I can show you. And uh, you're, you're basically the save uh, uh, window will open. I'm on a Windows computer and you can navigate to wherever you want um, on your desktop, let's say, <coughs> excuse me. And you can actually download, you can save the data file, okay? So um, the problem is, of course, if you have more, I think I have uh, 11 or 12 files here, um, that becomes quickly becomes kind of tedious if you have too many files. So instead, what I recommend doing, let's go back to our email here, is I recommend using anonymous FTP, okay? And you'll see the information that you need to set up the anonymous FTP at the top of your uh, processing complete email, all right? Um, so I can show you how to do that just as an example. Uh, again, I'm on a Windows computer, so I'll show you how to set that up using the Win SCP uh, software program. So I think I have a, a photo here to show how to do that. All right. So um, what you want to do is you op want to open up your your kind of your favorite file transfer program. In this case, like I said, I'm using Win SCP. It's on Windows, uh, and so you're going to set up under File Protocol. You're going to select FTP. Under encryption, you're going to select no encryption. All right. So there's going to be two options for the, the host name. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you go back to your, your email here, your processing complete email, you'll see at the top, you'll see the, um, the FTP uh, uh, link that you're going to want to use. So the, the, the address is either going to have BOU in it, like this one, or AVL. All right. So you're going to want to type that so again either avl ftp avl or ftp bou and then class.noaa.gov all right and then select port number 21 under username you're going to put anonymous and the password is user at internet okay and again all this information is here uh, on the email that you receive at the, the top of the page near the top of the page and the other thing you're going to want to make a note of is your order number in this case this is my order number here it's also listed in the subject line of the email, okay? So let me actually copy that, okay? Because we're gonna need that. So once you have that information, you have everything set up, you click login. So let's, let's actually do that. All right, I have everything set up. So um, mine was, let's double check again. I think it was BO, the BOU, yes, okay. So um, I'm gonna select my BOU that I have saved and I'm gonna hit login. Okay, and I'll just take a second to connect. Okay, and this is this is just popping up because that was the last directory that I was looking at. So now you'll see here you're in the um, the the anonymous class FTP section. And so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find these individual folders. You're going to find the want to find the one that corresponds to your order number. Okay, and for me the easiest thing to do is to just enter that. Okay, so if you do that, it'll search it for you. Click on that. It'll highlight it here. Open that up. And then you'll see your data files that you ordered rating, rating right there. And so then you can navigate to wherever you want on your computer. Um, so let's go maybe to the desktop. Um, so I can put them maybe right here. And then once you do that, you can come over here. You can highlight however many you want. And then you can drag them over and uh, copy them to wherever you want on your computer. And there you have it, how to download VIRS data from class. If you are interested in downloading ABI data, the process is similar, but with a few key differences. Look for the complimentary video showing how to download ABI Level 2 data files from class, available on the Aerosol Watch YouTube channel. Thank you.